I'm going to go ahead and um, at 3.27, I'll start to do the connection to um, YouTube, although I know we're still waiting for um, Jeff and uh, Nathan and then Nina to return. Mm -hmm. One thing that was great this week and it was the rain. Yes. Hey for rain. <laughs> Today is very beautiful out there. Okay, someone is that's oh that's um, uh, Anna Stevens. So Eileen, could you start my video? Sure. Hmm. Hi, Monica. Hi, Hi, how are you? Good. Hi, Hi Nina. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, there we go. How do you know if members of the public are attending? Um, we can see a participant list. Um, I think as a panelist, you can too, if you open up your participant tab. Um, and uh, Eileen is managing those and letting folks who are presenting or members of the committee into the meeting as a panelist. The rest of the public will stay as attendees to the meeting and will have the ability to make public comments at each uh, time on the agenda when that item is called. Um, so right now we have two members of the public in attendance, in addition to our I panelists and our committee members. There we go. Okay, what time is it? We got one more minute here. So it looks like we're just missing Jeff, but um, when it's 3.30, which I think um, it is now, you can go ahead and start the meeting if Eileen is ready. Okie dokie. We Let's, are ready. But... Okay, so I call this meeting to order. Due to the provisions of the governor's ex executive order in 2520 and in 2920, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act in order of the health officer of, of the County of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the Art and Public Places Committee will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Committee members and staff are participating from the remote locations and practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item three, public comment or during our public hearing items will be able to do so by utilizing the raised hand feature or pressing star nine on their phone. Then they will be given the ability to address the committee. The recording secretary will take roll call. Eileen. Eileen, I think you're on mute. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> no worries. You're good. You're all, good. Uh, for the record, all members are present with the exception of Jeff Nathanson. 
Great, thank you. Okay, for public, for public comments, if you wish to make a comment via Zoom, again, please select raise your hand. This is for the public. Um, if you're dialing via telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and the viewers. Please make sure to mute yourself when you're invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of the countdown. Do we have any public comments from the public who wish to make a comment on the art and public places items that are not on the agenda? Comments will be heard on specific agenda items at the time the item is called. There are no hands raised at this time. Okay, okay, great. We'll move on to the next item, approval of minutes. Copies of the November 2nd, 2020 meeting minutes have been distributed for your review. Are there any additional additions or corrections to the minutes? If not, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? I make the motion to approve the minutes as written. I second. I have a second, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minute, meeting minutes approved as written. Moving on to 4.2, copies of November 9th, 2020 special meeting minutes have been distributed for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? If not, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? I move that we uh, accept the minutes as written. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Minute meetings approved as written. Okay, moving on to the next item on the agenda. Number five, 5.1, Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square. Staff will present the recommended artists identified through a comprehensive selection process. The presentation will include background and information on project development, goals, timeline, budget, selection process, selection criteria, and community engagement. Community members, please hold any and all questions until the end of the presentation. Um, Tara? Great, thank you, Lisa. Um, sure. I'm actually going to have uh, David Ward, our pro a public art project manager, who's been the public the project manager for this project. I'm sorry, there's too many words with P's in them. Um, <laughs> so David has been working on this project um, since he joined our team last December. So he's gonna lead and start up the presentation and I will chime in um, on certain background areas and answer any questions at the end of the presentation. So David, thank you and take it away. I'll run the Thank you, Tara. I'll start as soon as I see the presentation. Great. Um, hello, Art and Public Places Committee. My name is David Ward. I'm the Public Art Project Manager for Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square. Um, and today as a member of staff with the City of Santa Rosa Public Art Team, we will be presenting an overview of Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square and make a recommendation of the selected artist that the project selection panel has determined from the selection process. Next slide. Old Courthouse Square gets its name from the first courthouse on site dedicated by General Vallejo in 1884. The 1906 earthquake destroyed the building in much of Santa Rosa. Another courthouse was built on site in 1908 and served as the county courthouse for another 58 years before being demolished in 1966. Um, from 1967 to 2016, the square was bisected by a major thoroughfare connecting Santa Rosa Avenue and Mendocino Avenue. Old Courthouse Square was reunified in 2017. The granite slabs that served as the steps of the 1908 courthouse were saved and incorporated to form the frame around the lawn which is representative of the footprint of the original courthouse on the square. Reclaiming the public square in the center of downtown Santa Rosa was a statement by the community of its value on the importance of a communal public gathering space. It also offers a chance to make a statement about how art plays a specific role in reflecting the community's identity and in inspiring its aspirations for the future. Santa Rosa is the largest city in Sonoma County with an estimated population of 177,000 
586. The city operates as a county seat and serves a wider population of 500,000. Next slide. Project development. Beginning in August of 2019, the City of Santa Rosa Public Art Team formed an advisory committee to determine the project's criteria, goals, site considerations, selection criteria, and community engagement components. The project's first public survey was initiated to gather project goals, Santa Rosa values, and use patterns of the square. The, uh, these results created the project's request for qualifications and project plan including the project's budget, which was approved by the APPC in November of 2019. Um, Tara, is there anything else you wanted to add about that? No, the, the advisory committee was formed before you joined our team, David. And so um, I think we had talked about a little bit um, of background on the outreach we did with that group. It was essentially formed of various stakeholders, including arts and culture, um, institutions, professionals with arts backgrounds, businesses in the downtown and property owners in the downtown, um, as well as architect professionals. So that there was a wide range of folks involved with that, really to exactly what you said, look at project goals, site considerations, um, and help us form the selection criteria for the project, as well as some of the public outreach components. So they were um, really a central part of the project development process um, and really tied it to the specifics of the site and, um, and brought a lot of value to that part of the development. So uh, I just wanted to share a little bit more background on that, um, but please continue. Thanks, Tara. Um, next slide. Um, Data from survey one, um, that was a, the first public survey um, that was launched in fall of 2019. And um, it asked a variety of questions about the use of Courthouse Square and other elements that um, define the public view of Courthouse Square. Um, questions, uh, there were eight questions and they involved uh, how often do you frequent uh, the square? And, and the most popular answer to that question was a few times a week or once per week. Uh, question two was, uh, which of the following have you participated at Courthouse Square? And the most answered um, response was a special event such as Wednesday night market or to eat or meet up with friends. Uh, question three asked participants to share what Santa Rosa means to you. Uh, popular answers contain subjects and phrases like community, home, work, hometown, also um, rural meets urban and center of wine country and tourist de uh, destination. Uh, it was also described as with words as uh, such as uh, potential and aspiring. Um, question four was uh, what community values could be represented by this project? Uh, top answers were number one was diversity, second was excellence and originality, and third was playfulness. Uh, question five, which goals for this project are important to you? Uh, most important to you, I should say. Um, Top answers were one, to create a sense of place for Courthouse Square, uh, two was create a gathering space, and three was create a visual uh, landmark or gateway, and all of those scored over 50% from our um, participants. Question six asked what the greatest benefits for a community, for, for our community to gain from a centrally located public space. The top answer was access to cultural offerings and to help support the local economy. Uh, question seven was, was uh, to provide any additional comments about the planning project or planning for the project, I should say. Um, popular, popular results included responses on subject line of public utility and for interactive nature um, uh, service and safety. Um, also the quality of art uh, using terms with, um, like boldness, sophistication, aiming high or inspiring. And then the last question was um, if participants lived within Santa Rosa city limits, which 85% of the survey uh, participants did. Next slide, please. Uh, project budget. Uh, the project's approved budget is set at $300,000. Uh, um, and that's the approved budget and $280,000 of the budget is selected for the selected artist, which is an all inclusive of, of design construction, uh, along with any city costs such as artists honorariums, marketing and outreach, uh, community engagement and site prep contingency. The project source of funding is the public art fund, uh, a combination of the required 1% of construction 
budget for the square and in lieu fees from private development required to meet the city's public art in private development ordinance, uh, which these uh, sources of funding can only be used for the purposes of public art. Next slide. The project timeline um, notes the different stages of the project's process. Um, we have changed the timeline a, a few times. Um, the RFQ was uh, extended from its original deadline to support our submittable online submission um, system, which is a new submission system that helped us uh, expand um, and open up an online submission form. Um, other things that affected our timeline were COVID-19 project hold, which um, held the project uh, until July 1st when we officially resumed the project. Um, other extensions that we had to make uh, for this were to switch our public engagement timeline uh, to accommodate for online surveys. Um, we also extended for uh, extended timeline uh, for the RFP to be displayed online. Um, and then also there were delays from the glass fire um, in fall of 2020. Next slide, please. The project goals um, of Imagine Art and Old Courthouse Square are to provide the entire Santa Rosa community with a prominent art piece or artistic symbol that reflects the uniquely Santa Rosa values of innovation and cultural inclusivity. This art installation should inspire people living in and visiting our city to reflect on what is special about our community and encourage them to gather downtown to experience it firsthand. The artist or artist team selected for this project will create a dynamic public art in installation that contributes to a vital thriving space to connect with each other and with the space. The public art should be forward thinking and express the innovation, diversity, and engagement of the community. The public art should help create a sense of place for Old Courthouse Square. Next slide. The request for qualifications, uh, we received uh, 148 submissions from across the US. Um, this is by far the most responses uh, the program has ever received for an RFQ and includes uh, some of the nation's most international and most famous public artists. Uh, approximately 60 of the 140 artists are from California and of those 14 from Sonoma County and 20 from New York. The remaining come from various parts of the country, including Texas and Oregon. Next slide. For community engagement, um, as mentioned earlier, there have been several opportunities to allow the public to engage with the project's process and stay up to date with the project's status, including through the city's website. Um, the two public surveys held uh, determine, have helped determine the project's goals and development of criteria. The second public survey provided an opportunity for the public to view the finalists' proposals um, and voice their support for their favorite project and the best um, and most appropriate proposal that fits the project's goals. Um, Tara, did you want to expand on any of those other public engagement? Um, I think that the surveys, both surveys, were a very important part of this process and were um, even more so important given the kind of conditions with COVID um, and not being able to do the in-person engagement activities we had planned. Um, we used other city tools to make sure that the word was out there to take the surveys, to learn about the artists um, who had final designs under consideration. Um, so the city's connect, city connections newsletter, the city and out there Santa Rosa social um, media handles um, there were two Press Democrat articles, and of course, um, aren't public places meetings are public meetings um, that the public can participate in. Um, I think that's, that's it, but the public comments we gathered through both surveys were um, uh, uh, tied in very closely with the development of the project and the final selection of the final artist. Thanks, Tara. Uh, if you want to move to the next slide selection process. Um, so uh, the, one of the first parts of the selection process was forming our selection panel. Um, selection panel members, we chose eight members uh, to represent the Santa Rosa public. 
Um, Leslie Graves, uh, event producer and organizer in Santa Rosa, and she's also a downtown resident. Jeff Nathanson, uh, executive director of Museum of Sonoma County, um, and also uh, Art and Public Places Committee member. Peter Lavelle, Santa Rosa-based architect and professor at Santa Rosa Junior College. Uh, Rob Sen, uh, Santa Rosa-based entertainment and creative industries business consultant. Uh, Charles Evans, a downtown property owner. Lisa Fuentes, uh, City of Santa Rosa Public Art and Place, Public Places Committee Chair. Uh, Andrea Ballas, a downtown business owner and CEO. Uh, Gloria Rubio, uh, Santa Rosa-based artisan and creative business professional small business owner. Uh, and of these, uh, the 10 highest scoring um, RFQ uh, submissions were identified uh, by our selection panel for closer examination. Um, and they were selected, um, that was, we were able to select uh, the finalists for the RFP section of the project. Um, the selection panel was formed, uh, uh, selection panel was formed representing arts professionals, downtown business and property owners, uh, downtown residents and members of the APPC. Um, finalists were provided the data from the first public survey to aid in the development of the proposals. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the selection process uh, was developed based on the project goals um, and input from the advisory committee, public surveys, um, which uh, created the artist qualifications portion of the project. Um, those sections are the artistic quality, originality, and innovation as evidenced by representations of past work in photos provided, uh, appropriateness of the artist medium and style for this project, experience developing artwork for public outdoor environments, experience, success, and or interest in creating public artworks in collaboration with an active stakeholder group, including community outreach. And finally, uh, or excuse me, uh, experience with projects of similar scope and scale or comparable professional experience to handle the requirements of working in the public sector. And finally, uh, availability to participate in the design, approval, and implementation of the project and complete installation by the deadline. Next slide, please. And then that, um, using those criteria, where uh, five finalists were identified uh, to move on to the RFP por uh, portion of the project. Uh, First finalist was uh, Laura Haddad and Tom Drugan, based out of Seattle, Washington, their proposal titled Valley of the Moon. Next slide. Next was uh, Blessing Hancock, based out of Tucson, Arizona, her uh, proposal entitled Unum. Next slide. Uh, next would be Gordon Cuther, based out of Napa, California. Um, project uh, or proposal it was uh, called the Dome. Next slide. Uh, Ned Kahn, uh, Sebastopol, California, uh, proposal named Air Arbor. Next slide. And lastly, uh, Benjamin Ball, based out of Los Angeles, California, um, his proposal entitled The Tie That Binds. Next slide. Uh, and then the final selection uh, criteria was developed based on the project goals, uh, advisory committee input and public survey for artwork proposals, uh, artistic excellence, originality and innovation as, as evidenced by quality of proposal for this project, um, appropriateness of the artist medium or proposed medium style and project concepts, demonstrated understanding and incorporation of the stated goals of the project, Proposed artwork should be suitable and permanent out for outdoor uh, placement and address durability, maintenance, and public safety concerns. Uh, proposed artwork should be an effective balance of size and scope of design and choice of materials to ensure that the finished installation is of sufficient prominence to capture the positive attention of the public. Proposal includes description of how collaboration with an active stakeholder group, including public outreach, might uh, occur demonstrated sensitivity to address the potential impact of the project on public citizens, and finally, availability to participate in the design, approval, and implementation of the project and complete the installation by the deadline. Next slide, please. 
And that brings us to the second public survey uh, that we launched. Um, and that was spring of 2020. Um, the, we received 752 total responses. Um, and out of all those results, uh, it seemed like the, the Dome by Gordon Huther and Unum by Blessing Hancock were the two highest scoring um, from the public data across a few different categories. Uh, the questions were formulated using identified project goals. Um, the questions included um, which design best reflects the Santa Rosa values of innovation and cultural inclusivity, uh, which design most effectively brings life to Courthouse Square as a multi-purpose centralized community gathering space, which design do you think gives Courthouse Square a sense of place that speaks to Santa Rosa as a unique, diverse, and resilient community? which design best acts as a visual landmark or gateway to Santa Rosa's downtown and artistic community, which design would encourage you to spend time, attend events and gather downtown. Uh, and then also we asked participants, uh, which design do you like the most with a follow-up question where they were able to leave a public comment about why a certain design was their favorite. Um, and all this data collected was part of the final decision by the panel. Um, the results were given um, to the uh, selection panel to incorporate into their um, final uh, decision. Next slide, please. The uh, selection panel uh, decided to have the top two artists respond to follow-up questions about elements that they may need to further develop or consider um, in their proposals. Uh, the two artists that were identified uh, submitted their responses to the panel feedback using um, any method they felt appropriate of renderings, images, or written responses that were necessary to further clarify their design components and process. Um, the two final proposals included in these representations, uh, responses by the artists were scored one last time by the selection panel to determine the selected artist. Uh, the selection panel met to con um, confirm this selection as the recommended artist that is presented to you today. Uh, next slide, please. And that brings us to the recommended artist, uh, which is Blessing Hancock. Um, the selection panel was very thoughtful and thorough with the entire selection process, and especially with the final decision taking into account the artist's responses to their final selection questions uh, also including the public opinion gathered through the surveys, and finally um, with the project selection criteria um, kept in mind. Next slide, please. Um, more about uh, the recommended artist, Blessing Hancock. Um, the description of her proposal, uh, which is entitled Unum, which is Latin for oneness, is a signature artwork that places emphasis on innovation, diversity, and engagement as leading values of Santa Rosa. Inspired by the unified old courthouse square, the sculpture embraces themes of welcoming and inspiration while also relaying the Santa Rosa values of innovation and cultural inclusivity uh, through its text, which was collected through a, uh, will be collected through a community engagement process that speaks values inherent to Santa Rosa. Um, during the day, this uh, sculpture casts shadows of the words onto the square using sunlight Whereas in the early mornings and evening hours, it will be illuminated by LED light fixtures mounted within the sculpture, creating a soft diffused glow within the structure's form. Um, community engagement will um, be text on, on the sculpture that will be collected through a public engagement opportunity, um, hopefully in collaboration with the APPC to identify the selected words that represent inherent values to Santa Rosa. Uh, the dimensions are uh, approximately 12 feet in height and 15 feet in diameter. The materials used are water cut or water jet cut stainless steel and LED lights. Next slide. Some of Blessing Hancock's past works. Um, these are examples of summing Blessing's past works with similar budgets, size, and stakeholders as Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square. Um, Blessing Hancock has works in Portland, Oregon, Tucson, Arizona, uh, Florida, uh, Colorado, and Palo Alto, California. Um, and um, some members of the selection panel were able to actually visit uh, Palo Alto um, 
Art of Veterans Hospital um, to view the work uh, which is presented to you on the top right of this slide. Next slide, please. Uh, the project timeline and next steps. Um, these, uh, the project timeline, including uh, today's meeting are on here. Um, timeline is subject to change um, and uh, indicates our next steps and uh, projected timeline. Um, next slide, please. And that brings us to the recommendation, which is to a, approve the recommended artist for Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square's public art project. And thank you for your time. Um, staff is here to answer any clarifying questions. Thank you so much, David. Lisa, you are muted. I am, I just realized that. Thank you. Thank you, David. Did you have anything else, Tara? No, I'm happy to chime in and answer questions as uh, okay. if the committee members would like to start there. Okay, do we have any committee members that have questions for Tara, David, regarding this item? If so, please. I'm, you know what, I will go ahead and um, go through all committee members that are here. And how about, and if you can pass, if you'd like, I'll start with Monica. You're on mute, Monica. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's a, it was a great presentation and what good work everyone has done. Uh, I do have a question though about, does, is it, is it just sitting on the ground or is there any kind of like thing that is, that it's on? I mean, it, uh, or, or how is it, secured. Anyway, I just um, couldn't see that in the in the pictures. But that's yeah, all. yeah thank you for the question. Um, so her proposal does not go into elaborate detail on that pending the final design phase that we will work with her on once she's approved by the committee and we enter into an artist services agreement with her. At that point, we work with our um, ADA access coordinators, our risk management department, our um, other staff within the city to make sure that we are doing everything that's required for accessibility and safety. Um, and at that point, we would get more details on the actual um, uh, siting or footing of the piece. Um, and those types of details can be shared back with the committee once they're solidified. Uh, but her design, her intention is for it to look like it is resting on the ground, but of course it would be done in a safe and secure way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Kristen? Am I on? Nope, I'm on. Thank you, David and Tara, for a very thorough presentation on the process. I understand. Uh, there were a couple hiccups along the way um, to do with COVID and our ability to have these uh, regular meetings. Um, it can take quite a bit of coordination. So I appreciate your guys' hard work to put these meetings together and organize such um, a thorough overview of these art pieces and how they could impact the courthouse square. Um, uh, I don't have any questions at this point. Um, having sat on the other side of that selection panel process, I know the work that goes into it and want to appreciate staff. Thank you, Kristen. Melanie? I do not have any questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Nina? Yes, I'd also like to echo Kristen's uh, comments. Great job. Um, I do have three questions. Uh, one, I was curious, there were two finalists, Gordon Huther being the other, and I looked at the um, notes that you had where he got a lot of very high scores and in some cases higher than Blessing Hancock. I was curious if you could uh, tell us a little bit about the questions that were asked to both of the um, final artists and what was it about um, blessings, responses, or lacking in Gordon's that led you towards selecting the one. Nina, going. are you talking about the survey? Because the survey Gordon did, uh, the public survey, but not with the panelists. The panelists actually had Benjamin Ball 
and um, Blessing Hancock as the two finalists. Oh, okay. I guess I was look. Yeah, just I was curious uh, how we got to this point in the final analysis. Okay, the survey, those um, answers um, and those comments are all, Tara does have a list of them. Um, so I take it you're referring to the panelists and the two, Benjamin Ball and um, Blessing Hancock? Okay, yeah. Okay, so that is, Tara, did you wanna? I'm happy so to I, jump in. Yeah, I think, David. I just wanna clarify what, the, it sounds like the question is, um, how did the finalists narrow down the, uh, sorry, how did the panelists narrow down from the five finalists to the two, Benjamin Ball and Blessing, or how did Blessing get chosen over Benjamin? Which <laughs> I'm just not sure which Your second. Your second uh, the second I, question. Yeah. Okay. David, do you want to talk about the general conversation the selection panel had weighing those two proposals? Sure. Um, yeah. Thanks for the question, Nina. Um, and yes, uh, I did. I did mention in the uh, presentation, and maybe I did. I wasn't very clear about it, but um, uh, the dome by Gordon Huther and Blessing Hancock's piece Unum were the highest scored in the public survey. But when it came down to selection panel um, and them filling out their rubrics and scoring each one of the proposals. Uh, it was Blessing Hancock and the tie that binds by uh, LA artist uh, Benjamin Ball that were identified. Um, and those, it was a, I guess it was a consensus of some sort that uh, they were the top two scoring artists and in a variety of ca categories, they, some of them scored much higher than the other. And so the selection panel wanted to see the two artists respond um, more acutely at um, some of the needs of the project that maybe were overlooked or not uh, fully considered in their proposals. So um, the process uh, of generating questions that were specific to their proposals um, and how they fit the project's needs a little bit better um, were generated. And then we, we um, uh, packaged those questions from the selection panel um, and Tara and I uh, sent them directly to the artists and they were given, uh, I believe it was about three, three weeks uh, to respond to those questions. Um, and I think it, I have them up right here and I think it was about five or six questions um, for each artist. Does that I answer think, the question pretty well? I, I just want to add on to that. I think that the, the general conversation that took a lot of time for the selection panel to consider and to think through and look at from every angle was really looking at all the selection criteria. So, you know, I think that like one artist might have scored higher than the other on one criteria, but then it was flip-flopped on the other criteria. So it was a conversation about weighing the importance of, um, you know, how it filled the space, um, the material, the scale, versus um, the concept, the meaning of the artwork versus the community engagement components. And so there were, there was a lot of conversation about the need for community engagement. And my sense from the selection panel and how they score things is Blessings proposal included a very, very rigorous community engagement component by, um, by essentially committing to working with the public art program with this committee, with other stakeholders, with artists locally in the community to gather the words that will be laser cut into the side of the piece. And um, to be honest with you, I don't think any of the other proposals came close to that type of community engagement. And I think that that was a major deciding factor, not the only, but a major deciding factor in, in the um, final decision. Thank you. I really appreciate having that information in case I'm asked, you know, and I just to, um, I mean, it's a great piece, but I just was curious how you got to the final selection. Um, then, um, do you know about how many words or characters will be able to be in the text on there? That's a good question. I actually don't. We didn't calculate that with her. I think there's room for quite a bit, but I, so I'm going to say in the hundreds, but I don't know exactly the right number to tell you. So, so it will be of sufficient size that it can be easily read. Yes, definitely. I think she has a preferred 
size, um, height of the lettering based on her past projects. Um, it is small enough so that large objects can't be put through uh, the openings, but small enough, uh, or and but large enough to see. So small enough to not cause problems, but large enough to read. Um, and I, so I think she she talked about that. I can't remember the exact size. It's four inches, maybe um, something like that. She's very um, thoughtful in her process for making sure that she ha it has meaning in the process she uses to, to choose the words as well as the readability and translation into other languages if that's a part of our um, desire. Uh, so it's, um, it will be quite a process to design that community engagement portion with her and others. So is it going to be all in English or other languages too? Or I believe that... there's an interest to see other languages as well. Yeah. And what about um, maintenance and vandalism? Has that been discussed at all? Yes. Do you want to talk about that one, David? Um, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find Rowan's report. Um, yeah. While, while he's looking for that, I can share that we had a part of the selection process was to have our um, contracted art cons uh, conservator um, look at the finalist proposals and have her give uh, essentially a report on her um, thoughts about materials, maintenance, safety, and cost estimates for taking care of them as a part of our permanent collection. And, um, and so there was discussion about um, the type of steel to be used, um, the lighting, components, having access panels like hatches within um, the piece so that a conservator could unlock, it would essentially be invisible to the public, but a conservator would know where to unlock the hatch to get inside of it to clean it out um, and do other repairs. So there's definitely, there was definitely conversation about that. David, do you want to add anything? Um, I'm just looking through the maintenance notes that um, our conservator uh, made during the presentations um, and noted uh, potential things that will need to be addressed, including um, corrosion and um, light gray staining from um, on the powdery surface um, that could cause corrosion, and then also replacing lamps um, from age um, and damage. Um, uh, LEDs tend to last longer, but um, there's consideration of that. Um, and then I'm just trying to see, oh, yes. And then her total estimate was um, $4,812 per year for maintenance. Um, and there's a full report too that um, she provided to us and the selection panel as well. And David too, I just wanna state too, for, my, for what I remember, her, her cost or the cost of that piece was relatively the same of all the others or even a slightly less than many of the others, correct? That is correct, yeah. It was, it's the same if not on the lower end of the five um, um, RFPs that we received. Okay, thank you. So that's excellent that we had the conservator weigh in at the very beginning. Um, it's great. So that money for ongoing maintenance doesn't come out of the project cost. That comes out of just the general budget for art and public places over the years. Correct. Great, okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Nina. Um, Jeff? Thanks, Lisa. Um, I was uh, a, a member of the, uh, the committee. Uh, I was a panelist, as you heard. And um, I will share that it was a rigorous process and we saw a lot of good proposals. Um, I was impressed with the number of um, sculptors who, public artists who uh, gave us their qualifications from around the country. And uh, I, I'm familiar with a lot of them. And in the end, the five finalists included two who are, were very local, which I thought speaks well of our, of, of our region, that uh, we have um, makers of that caliber. But uh, in the end, it really, I think, um, was clear to me that we had a very keen interest as T Tara was uh, very correctly stating that community engagement was a, a major component. And Blessing has a very strong track record of making durable public artworks that have a significant presence in the public spaces they occupy. 
But in addition to that, also has a track record of community engagement. And um, I, I've been fortunate to work on a number of projects uh, over the years that have included language and community uh, involvement and uh, interaction in creating text or other kinds of language components. So I think it's an opportunity for Santa Rosa. This is the one artist out of all of them who actually proposed that we have this engagement process so that we can actually get community input and then the words are going to reflect that process. So the potential for that, uh, from my experience, is really tremendous. So uh, I think we made a good choice. Um, I hope you agree. And uh, the, the one, one question that we really had uh, kind of a concern for, for me and a few other panelists was the scale and its appropriateness to the space. And we resolved that. And I, I feel that it will have a significant presence. And um, if all goes according to plan, it should barely be a great uh, addition to Old Court, Courthouse Square. So anyway, great. thank you. Thanks, Jeff. I'm going to go on to Nathan. And from there, um, Kristen did want to say something. So after Nathan, I'll go to Kristen and then go on to public comment. Nathan? Uh, yeah, I don't have any questions. Thank you. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Kristen, you're on mute. You're still on mute, Kristen. Great. There you go. <laughs> uh, so I had a quick question. Uh, I know a couple of the selection panel committee uh, representatives went to go see some of her works, Blessing Hancock's works in uh, Palo Alto. And I wondered if any of them uh, had shared with your committee, your team uh, about any words that kind of stuck out from the other projects that she had done there. I'm not sure if you guys, if anyone had visited, I'm looking yeah, at I think the Lisa brilliant online and it's quite powerful. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Lisa. You can share what you experienced yeah. in Palo Alto, but I wanted to chime in really quickly and state that for each of the projects Blessing has done like this with the words, um, there has been a separate and different explicit goal for the project and what the words are supposed to capture. Um, and so each project isn't the same, essentially. Um, for Santa Rosa, she would work with us to develop what, what the prompt is when asking for input from the community. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of ways that that could go, but that is a big part of the next phase of working with her on this is to figure out what we want to ask people when asking for what words should go on there, not just what words should go on there, right? I mean, I think it's like what, Looking to the future, what is what, what will Santa Rosa look like? Looking to to um, the past, what's an important lesson to learn? You know, I don't know what that prompt is, but those are the types of things we need to think about when when moving forward with this. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there because not a, not all the projects are going to be the same. But I I know that Lisa was able to go see the ones in Palo Alto. Yes, yes, I did. I went down to the Palo Alto. It, it was the um, Light, the public library and then also the community center there where she had multiple pieces that lit up and I went there during the day and at night to see what they looked like then and the text consisted of many different languages some of them I recognized some I didn't and then the ones in front of the library um, were passages of uh, you know some words from familiar books um, I know a few people around there did recognize um, the sentences that were on there that went all the way around to what books they were. I didn't, unfortunately, um, but I thought that was great for in front of the library um, to have that. And you could, it, there was some kind of interaction with it because you're reading them, you're looking all the way around them. And then, um, I'm not sure what was being said in the other languages um, across the way by the community center, um, but it was, it was, it, it made it, it made the community center, it made that area welcoming to everyone. I mean, it really just says, you know, you are all welcome here by having just a variety of like that. And I really appreciated it. 
um, being there and being surrounded by that. Monica, you have one more question? Oh wait, were you done, Kristen? I'm sorry. Yes, I am done. Thank okay. you for All right. Thank giving you. me that in-person experience. <laughs> yes. I just am curious about the appearance of it. In the pictures, it looks sort of golden, but it's it's a uh, stainless steel, and I'm wondering about about it. I I think that golden is just what the light is. Um, there is we're looking into, we're exploring the possibilities of having different color lights. And as the ones in Palo Alto have, they do have a button that you can push on them. And each time you push the button, it changes color, the light does. So we're looking into that with her at the moment. Um, Tara, I'm not sure. Yeah, I was you. just going to add that the surface is stainless steel. So it would have a silver gray uh, appearance. Um, it will look very different in day, daylight versus at nighttime because at nighttime it would be illuminated from the inside with the light coming out through the laser cut words. And the images that she put in her proposal show a golden light. That's her favorite light and she felt like that was a good fit for Santa Rosa given our golden hills nearby. Um, but she was open to the idea of different color lights or incorporating a button that the community members could push. Thank you, Monica. And right at this moment, I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna move on to see if we have any um, public comments regarding this item. And it looks like Candace. Yes, um, hold on just one moment. Um, Excuse me, Candace, you've raised your hand, are you there? Hold on, Lisa, hold on, Lisa. Um, Eileen will facilitate that. She has to get the timing up. So just hold on a sec. Okay, yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, Candice, please confirm that you can see the timer and choose, confirm your name if you so choose. I'm going to go, you are able to talk at this time. Hi, Eileen, thank you. Um, I can see the timer and uh, this is Cadence Hinkle Allenson. Good afternoon, Chair Fuentes and members of the committee. Um, I am the executive director of the Santa Rosa Downtown District. And I just wanted to express our support for the process and the work that went into um, the whole project. It was inclusive and thorough and Tara and David provided many opportunities for engagement um, from the beginning of the process with the creation of the call for artists all the way through the selection. Uh, and um, we really appreciate the ability to participate in the discussion as well as um, seeing how transparent and inclusive the project was. Um, the district, we've been working really hard to bring the square and the downtown area to life. And um, this installation is going to be really critical uh, to that work. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of you, uh, to the committees involved, and especially to the staff for their hard work in uh, bringing this project to fruition. Very excited to see it installed in the next couple of years. Thank you, Kate. And I just want to apologize for um, mispronouncing your name the first time. Okay. No problem. Okay. Do we have any other public comments? No, we have no additional hands raised at this time. Okay, thank you, Eileen. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on. Let's see, is there a motion to approve this recommended artist? So moved. Monica, you're on mute, <laughs> sorry. I move that we uh, accept this project, approve of this project. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. The discussion is now opened. Um, committee mes members wishing to, to comment, discuss, please physically raise your hand. Okay, uh, Nina. I was, um, okay. when you talked about the lighting, it made me wonder, um, so it sounds like the sculpture will be lit from within. What's the ambient lighting like on the square at that location? Will there, will there be exterior lighting provided by the city or what? Uh, there are already several light fixtures near the north end of the square. Um, that area of the square has a certain amount of light in the evening, um, I think it will not diminish the internal light source from this piece. It will still um, glow and you will see light emit from it. 
but I believe it will also have an environment well, where it will not be pitch black all the way around it. Um, given the lighting from within, we are not going to light it specifically with external lights. Um, it is meant to be lit from within rather than externally. Great. Okay. Thank you, Nina. Kristen. Uh, I wanted to just comment on the internal lighting. Uh, so if Blessing Hancock shows the amber or the golden light as her preferred color, uh, I, I just want to um, call out that there will be considering of this piece in relation to the already um, light installations in the square that are changing colors. So I want to be conscious of that uh, when this, you know, when discussion uh, goes forward about what color to illuminate the piece. Um, I think that the golden would be a nice compliment, uh, but want to make sure that it's not too distracting from what's already there. Thanks, Kristen. I, I want to respond to that really briefly just by saying that the same um, programming software that those lights run through are probably what would be used for blessings. And so there's actually the ability to combine them on one DMX programmer, which, um, which would allow for coordination of colors, not necessarily match, you know, syncing them up completely. But um, Anyway, we're looking at making sure that that's a part of our consideration when working with her on designing the lighting. Great. Great. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Tara. Melanie? Is the um, current panel going to be continuing to work on the final installation? Will they continue to work on through with the artists or how does that work? That's a great question. I, we spoke about that at our last selection panel meeting and I put it out there that I would welcome involvement um, by the members in some capacity when we work on the design process for the community engagement um, because they have kind of an investment in the history and um, they've invested a lot of time with looking at this proposal already. I, of course, I would be asking for more of their time, but um, I, I, would in, I would include and, and invite them to be a part of that for sure. Anything else, Melanie? Or is that, did I answer your question? I think so. Okay, thanks, Melanie. Uh, Jeff? Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll just add one other thing to what uh, Tara just um, mentioned in uh, addressing your question, Melanie, which is that I volunteered the museum to be engaged in that process of public outreach and um, I don't know if we'll be able to gather, but uh, certainly if we were able to gather um, at some point during the process of getting people to contribute language um, words that we would uh, certainly host something like that and help get the word out. And um, I just think that uh, with the APPC and members of the committee, and I know Cadence and the, um, the, the downtown group that she runs, uh, plus outreach through schools and other organizations, I think we can really get a lot of people involved with talking about what words are gonna be on the sculpture and how that reflects the community. So um, I think it's gonna be, I, I think it's gonna be a full court press, you know, by all of us to, to try to really make this the best process possible. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Nathan, do you have any comments? Are you? You're on mute, Nathan. No, this all sounds good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. Do I have any more comments? Or Nina? Will there be um, any kind of survey to gather the words or um, how we, how's the, is it too I, early to ask how the community engagement will be facilitated for this? I yeah, think we, some of that we, was mentioned in the um, the preview that David was going over. Yeah, it will be a process that we start early next year. So we'll, it will definitely involve um, a, a design process to really design the community engagement. So I, I think surveys are a useful tool. 
if we know what we're asking. Um, I think that it's um, going to take some time to, to develop that and then to develop our outreach strategies. It would be lovely to be able to have in-person events where people can gather and participate in community in person. Um, but if that is something that we still cannot do, then we will definitely be using surveys for some component of that. And um, you mentioned that the selection committee would be involved in helping uh, review that. Will art and public places be involved? Yes, for sure. Art and public places will be involved. We, we will need, like Jeff said, we'll need to cast a, a wide net to make sure we're, we're touching uh, as many parts of our community as possible through this process. So, um, you know, nonprofit partners, business partners, um, art and public places partners, arts institutions, educational institutions. I mean, there's a service industries, there's a variety of contacts I, I, I believe we will need to make and ask for help in reaching, um, you know, getting the input, getting words um, submitted from everybody. So, thank you. All right. I have one other question, but I'm looking for the budget here. So the $20,000 that is not going to the artist is going for, uh, let me find my thing. Yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, I was going to clarify that when David went over that slide, um, just to specifically say that the difference of the approved budget and the artist budget is $20,000 and that budget goes towards things that are the city's responsibility. We've already paid out some of that through honorarium payments to finalist artists. Some of it goes towards community engagement type cost, printing, marketing, things like that. Some of it would go towards some kind of an event if we could ever have an event, um, either for the community engagement part, part of it or for some kind of grand opening celebration. Um, other costs include site improvements that the city is responsible for to prepare the site for the artwork. So there's a fine line between the artist's responsibility for installing the art, but then certain things that the city is responsible for. So we budget all of that out. It also includes a contingency. So there's a variety of things that that that, that will cover. So we can have a, a good marketing plan for the rollout of this. Um project. <laughs> I mean, there's money to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Anything else, Melanie? That's it. Okay. Thanks, Melanie. Appreciate it. Um, so let's, at this point, I would like to move on and I would like to call a vote to appro approve the recommended artists and approve the artwork design as presented. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? None. So are we passing this unanimously? Looks <laughs> like. All right. I just wanted to see. All right. Great job. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you okay. all for this. It's a I think the city will love this. I do too. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Next item on the agenda. See, we got 5.2 project updates. Um, Tara will present and update us on current projects. Besides this one, of course. <laughs> yes, I know after this, I don't have much to say. You can see where I've been spending my time. Um, so I do have a few very brief updates just on um, some of the lingering open and out projects that you may have seen downtown. Um, the open and out program has kind of morphed and transitioned into the winter lights or the winter themed um, installations that you can see downtown now. Um, while public art funds from this committee weren't used farther than what I presented to you um, earlier this fall, um, there are still more art pieces that you can see downtown that have been added um, through the winter lights activities. So I encourage you to take a stroll down there at some point and check them out. Um, there's also some of the open and out pieces that finally got installed that were kind of the last ones um, to, to be installed. And they include um, the pillars, uh, the welcome Santa Rosa, or they just say downtown Santa Rosa. They're large um, pillars and pots, planting pots at the end of 4th Street 
at E Street, and then there's another set down at B Street and 4th Street. Those are um, the tall ones are now painted by an artist, Alex Cole, with a kind of abstract landscape design. Um, so that's a new addition since I presented uh, last time. Um, we also, uh, through a, a partnership with the Sonoma County Museum, we hung, um, helped to hang some pieces by participating artists in open and out. They were given the opportunity to hang one piece in the window front display at the museum. So you can see that on the corner of 7th Street and B Street. Um, there's a poster that talks about that they were part of open and out. Um, so um, that I wanted to let you know about. And then I think, I think last time, I can't remember if I shared our ongoing conservation and maintenance with our um, conservator uh, preservation arts. Um, they they had worked on tuberosity in Olive Park, and that piece is now freshly painted um, and cleaned up. Um, and we are working on identifying the next round of pieces that they would start working on. Um, some of the pieces that they had on their list, we have had to kind of hold on, given um, the activities uh, with the road closures downtown, the open and out program, and the outdoor dining spaces have kind of cramped some of the areas where they were going to work. So. Um, the next item on their list was the woman with water jug fountain at the kind of um, near Russian River Brewery on 4th Street. Um, but there's, there was too much activity there for them to be able to get their cleaning equipment in there and to have water access at this time. So we will do that soon. Um, and I think that's really all I was going to report on today. But if there's any questions that you have on other projects that you're curious about, I'm happy to try to answer. I, I did have a question. Um, you know, since now we have this new shelter in place, um, will the outdoor eating areas where a lot of the artwork is currently visible, will those still stay in place or what's the plan there? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know if the plan is to completely take them down or to leave some of them up um, for when it's allowed again. Um, as you know, the current um, stay at home order goes through January 9th, I believe. Um, so I have not, that's something that I can check on um, working with Cadence and others in the downtown to see if there's a timeline for that. My sense is that most restaurants that can leave them up will leave them up. Um, but um, that is because right now we have an agreement to have that set up as is through the end of January, I believe. And so um, that may be the timeline at this point, but things change very quickly and we try to adapt and support as much as we can. Thanks, Melanie. All right, so we're gonna move on to the, oh, Nina, Hi. you had a question? Okay. Yeah, I got the question from a community member today about what's Art and Public Places Committee doing approving new art when the Ruth Lazawa fountain hasn't been <laughs> uh, re, installed. So what kind of comment, what can you tell me about the status of that? I knew that was going to come up today. <laughs> um, so we are working on it. It is getting closer. Um, I can provide a more detailed um, report to you. Actually, I have an item to bring to the committee at some point in the new year regarding the fountain. Um, but the status is that we're working with our art conservators and art handlers to assess its condition and work on the best way to reinstall the piece on the fountain. We are trying to align our timing with the actual construction of the fountain, which has not be started yet. So um, there was private um, funding secured and um, kind of a donation from Hugh Food Trail Corporation to build the fountain. And so there's still an agreement being processed within the city for, for that work. Um, and there's uh, and there's not quite, I believe, a timeline for when that construction will begin, but it should be soon. And we are hoping to make sure the artwork is put back on the fountain safely um, in, in an appropriate time timeline. So it, it's in process. It's in process. It's um, making progress, but it's not to a point where I can um, give you any dates at this point. So I know you can't give any dates, but can you give an off the cuff? estimate of do you think that this new sculpture will be installed before um, the fountain? 
I actually think the fountain will be built before the new sculpture is installed. Yay! <laughs> I don't know if the art panels will go back up, but I, the fountain will be built. There's two components to the project. So the fountain has to be built, the art panels have to go up. I think we're on a good timeline to see both the art panels and the fountain um, be built before the new artwork goes in in early 2022. That gives us essentially a whole year to work on that. But um, I, a lot of those components are out of my control, so I cannot promise. I should so just put up an in informational us. sandwich right there in that spot <laughs> so yeah. that people that are curious can go there and look and see what's happening. <laughs> Kristen? Uh, I had a follow-up question to Melanie's about the open and out program. Uh, I'm interested on when, I know that was extended, but I'm wondering about where to find more information about it potentially being voted on again, or where, what committee would be having that uh, discussion? So yeah, the downtown subcommittee gets regular updates from Cadence um, at their monthly meetings, which are the first Thursday of the month. Um, I believe they're at 8.30 a.m. on Zoom. Um, that would be a good place to hear updates. Uh, you can also go to the website, which I'm going to have to, to remind myself, I believe is openandoutsr.com. Um, and that will give you a sense of what's going on with that. I'm not sure um, if it's fully updated today, but that is the website for the project. Um, so I think that those are the two places that I would check for more information on what's going on with the closures and open and up. Great, thank you. Great, anyone else? All righty, then we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, let's see here, community member reports. Do any of the committees wish to make a report at this time? If so, please raise your hand. We don't have any. Okay, if I, don't, I don't see any hands raised. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to number seven. Tara, for department reports, do you have anything for department reports? I do not at this time, thank you. Okay, all right, so that leaves adjournment. So the next regular meeting of Art and Public Places Committee is scheduled for Monday, January 4th, 2020. And this meeting is now adjourned. Thanks everyone. Thank you everybody. Thanks everybody, happy holidays. Yes, thank you too, thank you. Bye for real, always mute it now. <laughs> <laughs> Great meeting to end the year on. Thank you. Yeah.